we are back to continue with the reassembly of the Villiers 90 engine removed from a Pengor Penguin amphibious ATV. We're going to start with uh, replacing the drain plug seals, the fiber washers, on the two drain plugs on the chain case, the level check plug on the train chain case, the level check plug on the transmission, the drain plug on the crankcase, and the drain plug on the transmission. Now for the seals, the fiber washers, I've actually found a source not too far away from me, a fastener store that has quite an assortment of different fasteners, washers, O-rings, etc. and they have fiber washers. So I purchased three different sizes of fiber washers. I took a couple of the drain plugs with me to check them and the fiber washers we're going to use today look like this. There's one that we will use five of on everything except the transmission drain plug and we'll use one like that on the transmission drain plug. Okay, so going to use our 3 16 British Standard wrench and we'll just start at the far side here. It's quite simple. Take the old washer off the drain plug, or the check plug in this case, make sure the plug is clean. Put a new washer on it. And screw it back in. Now this plug here we will have out again when we add oil to the chain case. And just simply fill the chain case with oil until it starts to dribble out that plug. And that's how we know the level is correct in that chain case. before this engine is run actually when it goes back on the stand and I know it's going to stay in the stand until we're done with it I can put some oil in the transmission and this is the outer chain case it's not installed permanently I guess yet but when it's installed and we can no, we're going to leave it on. I can then add some oil to the chain case. The oil sits in this section of the chain case. As you can see, there's a vent hole there in behind the fan. Okay, so those three are tight. The crankcase drain. This drain is usually only used if you severely flood the engine with fuel and you can't get it started not likely to use it on the penguin because it would be a challenge to reach this would be right underneath the, the crankcase on a motorcycle it would be not too bad to get at possibly depending on where the mounts are This is, you should all thread in nice and easy by hand. You shouldn't need a wrench on them until they're seated. The only holding oil in it, or in this case, the crankcase pressure and vacuum. And we've got one more transition level. Now there are other fiber washers used on this engine. I'll show them in a moment here. You can see I've got the engine out of the stand for this. This could have been done before now. If I didn't have the fiber washers at hand. I'm 
Let's transmission drain. The washer is stuck to that drain plug, so I'm just going to to locate my knife. I haven't got my knife on me. Oh, it's coming off there. There we go. Just, that's the very slender washer, or yeah, fiber washer, which is almost identical to the one that was on it. Okay, so transmission drain is tight, level check is tight, crankcase drain, chain case drain, chain case level. Okay, so those are our five old fiber washers. So the other fiber washers used on this, you can see it here. Ground on that. Okay, our other fiber washers are on the chain case fill plug. There's one here. This fill plug, of course, is where you add the oil to the chain case. And this fill plug is yanked out. Can you see the there? You can see the white through the center there. So even if we put a new gasket on it and this one's actually in pretty good shape. If we put a new gasket on it, it might stop some oil from dribbling out, but if oil wants to get out, it's going to come right out through the vent in, the, in that plug. And this is the fill plug and dipstick for the transmission, and it is vented as well. You can see the hole in it there. You can see the hole through in it. And the washer and it's in pretty good shape, so we're just going to leave that on. So those are all our drain and level check plugs with new fiber washers. The sealer on the gasket on the inner chain case should be set by now. So we can take the outer chain case back off, take the fan spacer back out, and use our 5 16th British Standard wrench to take this nut off. There's a washer behind it. Nut and washer off. Let's make sure that washer wrench it away. And that should simply lift away. Okay, so that was this cover, this half of the cover, the uh, Sorry, this half of the chain case, the outer cover, was on putting pressure on this half of the chain case because I would use sealer on the gasket that's behind the uh, behind the cover around the engine crankcase. So the next thing we'll, have, we'll do here is take this adapter out. <coughs> Excuse me, it's uh, held in with four screws. And we'll take that out and then we'll take the seal out of it. I'll just move the engine out of the way here. The adapter for the fan seal is held in with four screws with nuts on them that are equivalent to a 9mm. Quarter inch drive socket. Nuts and washers all off here. And I'll show you something here. Okay, so that's the nuts and washers all off. So that cover should, sorry, that adapter should simply It should simply drop out, but it may be held in with a little bit of adhesive. 
So I'm going to try a gentle, very gentle pry. There we go. I just put the screwdriver in between the, the cover and the adapter. Pry it loose. This new did have a little bit of sealer on it. Now, this adapter is on these four studs, and you may notice that the there is movement here. This it doesn't. The holes in the adapter are oversized compared to the studs. That's because when we change the tension on the chain that goes between the engine and the transmission, we change the distance between the pin that's located on the cover that's which is located to the transmission and the crankshaft. So this seal housing, you can see, it will move to make up for whatever adjustment has been made in the chain tension. So this actually has to be installed after this cover is installed. So we will install this cover with a new gasket. We'll make sure this is as clean as we want it. And we'll remove as much sealer as we can from, from this surface here. And clean it all as, as we can. Make sure this surface here is clean. And we'll put this back on with the nut and washer. We'll, have, we'll change the seal that's in this adapter. Then we'll put the spacer on the crankshaft and then we'll put the seal adapter on so and it will find its its location. We want it centered on this adapter. We wouldn't want to have it have this secured to this cover and put it on and then have it push to one side of the seal or another. We want the the pressure on this adapter even so we'll put this on after that cover is on. So first we'll need to get this seal out. Of course before I do anything else I'm going to round up these uh, nuts and washers which will have to be cleaned by the way and put them in our zip bag and again these nuts are chamfered on one side and flat on the other and the flat side has been against the washer so we'll remember that. I'll put the nut for the cover in here and the spacer as well while we're here. Put everything in a bag so it's all together and hopefully not to get lost. So to remove this seal what I'm going to do I'm simply going to take a flat screwdriver and carefully use it to pry the seal out a little bit at a time, several places. Hopefully, you know, yeah, the seal's coming out. And this seal is probably rock hard like the other ones where it's supposed to seal against the, sh the, uh, the fan adapter. Oh yeah, it's pretty hard. Now, that has come, oh, there's a mosquito. That has come out as far as it's going to with that. Oh, I'm just hold it, pry it here. There we go. So there's the seal out. And there's the adapter, which I will clean up clean all the old oil out of it and just clean this surface here and clean the, yeah, there's the sealer that was used on it there. Looks like a non-setting sealer, but anyway, we'll clean this all up and get the new seal. So after a few minutes with some paper towel, some brake clean, which is essentially alcohol, a 
careful use of a single edge razor blade and a small wire brush the seal adapter is pretty clean there's a groove machined in it here which is it was a challenge to get the the sealer out of it but anyway it looks like it's nice and clean there's some staining on here but the wire brush wouldn't take that off and it's it's not material that will interfere with the sealing of that and there's a little staining in here too but it's not it doesn't feel like it's material that's adding thickness to it that will interfere with the seal going in there and the inside of these holes should be cleaned too to make sure it won't uh, interfere with whatever position that adapter needs to be in so that's ready for the new seal to go in and we'll clean the outer chain case cover before I begin to clean this cover anymore I'm going to have a go at removing this broken screw first thing I'm going to do is take uh, grinder and carefully remove just the bit of the screw that's sticking out of the uh, casing. I've tried a pair of uh, side cutters to grab it and try to turn it and that hasn't worked so I'm going to try grinding it smooth and maybe try drilling it. And these screws that uh, hold the fan seal adapter on, they are just screws so I'm going to just back them out with the screwdriver once I get the screw out and then uh, I'll be able to clean this. Okay after some gentle work with the uh, grinder I've got the end of the broken screw flat. I did make a, a little mark on the casing there but I don't think that will harm anything so now I'm going to try to start drilling this out. I'm going to try with a fairly small drill and work my way up and see what happens. Well there is the first drill through and of course the challenge when drilling out a screw is to drill through the center of the screw and not damage the original threads in the hole. Well so far so good. The next drill bit hasn't gone exactly through the center of the screw so I don't think I can drill any more without damaging the original threads. I may have done some damage to them already so now it's time to get out some small pliers and maybe a small screwdriver and see if I can work that around and maybe bend it in towards the center of the hole and, and get it loose enough that I can get it to come out. So after some careful tapping and prying, the broken part of the screw has moved in the hole. Now I have to try to get a hold of it and get it out of there without damaging the threads. Looks like it's the pocket knife to the rescue. When I put my pocket knife, the uh, all end of it, into the center of the screw and turned it inward, the broken part of the screw screwed out of the hole. So now I'll take uh, one of the screws that was in the fan seal adapter and put some oil on it and run it in and out of this hole just to clean the threads up a bit. The, I checked the other hole here that didn't have a screw broken in it. The screws that came out of the fan seal adapter out of those holes fit that hole so I can use one of them to clean the threads up. Okay, so with some oil on the screw and some gentle turning in and out, the screw that holds the fan uh, adapter, fan seal adapter in place, is now in the hole where the broken screw was. So that hole can be used if somebody wants to, but I actually won't be putting a screw in that because it holds the the fan shroud in place and these two screws are near impossible to get to when the engine's in the machine so I'm just gonna leave them out. Well I took some penetrating oil and a wire brush and some paper towel and cleaned this as best as I could and I think it turned out not bad. The, there are some stains on it which will be covered. This this area here will be covered by the 
intake screen and this area here will be covered by the cooling shroud and we won't be able to see any of this stuff when the engine's all together but I've cleaned it as well as I can anything on here is a, is a stain it doesn't there's nothing loose on there that can fall off I've cleaned this surface here which is where the gasket's going to go and put the screws back in for the fan seal and make sure they're snug because the fan seal adapter will have to go on and the nuts be tightened and we don't want the screws backing out and we have the gaskets here I have also have the wrench and the nut and washer over here we'll go on the stud to hold this cover in place and we have a pair of gaskets one this gasket came in the gasket set and when I put it on here to test fit it it seems to be a little short it doesn't quite cover the inner part of the chain case here when it's on the, the locating dowel but I have another gasket which is actually slightly thicker material in it it completely covers the edge of the inner chain case here so I'm going to use it and what I'm going to do is put some, some sealer on the on one side of it I'll put it on the side that goes on the cover on the outer half of the chain case oh, I can't see it there and I'll put some the gasket sealer on one side of the gasket put it on the gasket on the cover and put the cover in place so I'll put the, the sealer on I'll put it on just a thin coat just to fill any small holes and to help hold the gasket in place and then we'll come back and set everything in place. So I have a thin now I have a thin uh, layer of sealer on the gasket so I'm going to put the gasket sealer side down on the outer case and we press it in place now when the case goes on the gasket and the case have to locate on a pin on the back of the inner case here so I'll just do that carefully here so we've got the, the stud here and the pin here to locate everything on so it's on the stud the hole that's in the gasket and then the hole in the cover washer on, put the nut on with the side that has been against the washer, back against the washer. This was the stud that the end of it was all rusty, but I had this nut on a second ago and it spun on quite easily, so there we go. Before I put the wrench on that, make sure that the gasket is sitting about even because it's only located at the on the pin at the back we can adjust it a little bit there it seems to be even the amount sticking out top and bottom so now using our 5 16 British standard wrench in this Slightly awkward spot. I'm tighten this down. We, uh, of course, we've left the fan seal adapter out because it has to be put in place after this cover is on. so it can't loosen off while the engine's running and fall in uh, cause problems so okay so that is tight gasket is in place I can see the gasket sticking out a little bit all the way around so it's even and I'm just going to wipe the extra sealer off 
There's a li little bit of sealer has oozed out, and there was some of the gasket that had sealer on it. But it's sticking out of the case now, so I'll just wipe that off, tidy it up a little bit. And then that should be that cover the outer chain case installed. Next we'll put the seal in the seal adapter and install that. And the spacer. And the fan. Have it all the way. Okay, so here we go. Starting to look like a motor. Well, Get close to putting the piston and cylinder back on. I think we'll do the uh, Dynastart first, and that's going to be interesting. So here's the fan seal adapter cleaned up. I took all the old sealer off of it. Here's our new seal. And we have a seal driver a socket that fits the seal. So I'm going to tap that seal carefully into place, as straight as possible. And it's already starting crooked. Oh. Start it just. And here, down so I can see if I'm doing this straight. Okay, and it started. I want the seal in nice and straight. And I don't think I'm going to put it in quite as far as it was when I took it out. The seal was in. A lot closer to the bottom of the adapter. Not quite as straight as I would like it. Okay, so that's actually a little bit more there. Okay, so that looks straight. So what I'm going to do, now that the seal is in, I'm going to put some oil on the seal and put some sealer on this surface here, just the just the back surface that contacts the the outer chain case. I'm going to set this in place, start the nuts and put the washers on and start the nuts. Then I'm going to put the spacer. I'm going to oil, put some oil on the spacer, put the spacer in, which will center the fa seal adapter, and then we can tighten up the, the nuts. I'm going to get this vise out of the way and these other tools I don't need, and we'll put the seal adapter in place. So I've put a light smear of sealer on the back side of the fan seal adapter and put some oil on the seal. I'm just going to set the adapter in place. The washer is interfering with it actually. The washer on the stud here is interfering with it. So I've got sealer on the screws that hold the adapter in place. So I'll wipe that sealer off. I'm just going to set the washers. And nuts, the nuts with the flat side against the washer. I'm going to put them on loose. Again, the, the, the nut is chamfered on one side, so I'm putting that out. So the flat side of the nut is going against the washer. And the washers are, I can see which side was out on them before. So I'm just putting them back the way they were. I doubt it matters a whole lot, but 
I'll go put it back the way it was. So that's on. So now I'll put, this is the spacer that goes between the sprocket and the fan, so I'm going to put some oil on that. So it doesn't go in the seal dry. I'm just going to slide it in on the crankshaft, and it's probably impossible to see from where the camera is, but the seal adapter is is not lined up because it's on fairly large holes there. So the, I can just turn the the turning the spacer, put it in the seal. Should go in a little further than that. I can see that the you can see it there. I mean the Woodruff key, the groove for the Woodruff key is there and it's not fully accessible yet. Hmm. Well, it could be that there's enough slop in the hole here that this case is interfering. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen the nut that we just tightened to put the other chain case on. I'm going to loosen that nut. There. That's what was wrong. The the seal has now slid into place. Sorry, the spacer slid into place. The uh, the case must have been interfering with the spacer. So now, with the seal against the spacer, and the spacer against the sprocket, tighten this nut back up, crankshaft is and see turning, and now I'll tighten this, the nuts up just by hand here, and then just snug them up with the 9mm socket. Quarter inch wrench. No, not very, they're not very large screws, so I'm going to have to over tighten and break them. Evenly. Trying to get them all evenly tight. There. Quite a spot to work in here. OK. 
Okay. So our fan seal, fan adapter seal is in. It's got some oil on it, so when it's first run, it'll be lubricated. It won't uh, wear the seal out. So we'll have to get the Woodruff key in and put the fan on. And that will be next, I think. Okay, here we are back at the fan side of the engine. We're zoomed in nice and close so we can see what we're doing. And what we're going to do is install the fan. I'm going to say partially install the fan. I checked the service manual. Sorry, I just rattled the camera. I checked the service manual and apparently there is a tool available, or sorry, a tool listed to hold the fan so that we can tighten the nut on the crankshaft that holds the fan on so the fan doesn't work loose. I don't have that tool and this fan is already damaged. It's missing a blade. It's missing a blade. Missing a blade. And I am going to reuse this fan. I don't think that one blade is going to reduce the cooling sufficiently to be a concern. I also don't think it's going to upset the balance enough to be a concern. Ideally, yes, we should put a new fan on this engine, but I'm going to reuse this fan. And to install the fan, of course we need the fan with the hub still in it. It does look like someone attempted to loosen the screws on this, but Looks like, of course, they were unsuccessful because the screws are peened at the other end. So we need the fan. We need the lock washer that was on there. We need two nuts. And we need a Woodruff key, or half moon key. Now, this key fits in this groove in the crankshaft. Now, we want to make sure that that groove is clean. And I'm not sure it is at the moment, so I'm just going to take a little air here. Watch your ears. And blow the dirt out of it. And then we'll put this Woodruff key in this groove. It should be a nice close fit. It's a very close fit. Okay, just got to start with my fingers. And give it a gentle squeeze with a pair of pliers here. Now, the Woodruff key is rounded on the bottom. The groove it's in is rounded. So the Woodruff key can sit in there so it's not... so the flat face of it isn't parallel to the crankshaft. But we want it we want this face, this flat face on top here, parallel to the crankshaft so that when we push the fan on, the fan will slide over the Woodruff key. If you happen to have the Woodruff key set so that the outside is too high, it's possible when you push the fan on that the Woodruff key will simply fall out and if you don't check it, you've got it all tight and then, oh, the Woodruff key is there, or the Woodruff key could even go up and get jammed in here, causing lots of grief. So, the fan should actually slide on fairly easily. So what we want to do is, this is the groove the Woodruff key should go into in the fan. So the fan should go on the crankshaft, and if we wiggle it just a little bit, and I can actually, I'm looking down from above here, Hold the engine with the connecting rod. It does not want to go on. A little more of a squeeze here. Just make sure the Woodruff key is all the way in. 
course, being careful not to mark the crankshaft with the pliers. Well, I had the outside edge of the woodruff key, outside end of the woodruff key, a little high, maybe. Again, turn the fan on here. Okay, so there it's it started on. I'm just gently pushing with my hand. Now I'm going to try a little more forceful push, but just with the end of the hammer. I'll probably hit the camera here, so I'm just going to hit with the end of the hammer just to tap the fan on. And I keep bumping the camera. I'm going to try a little more, a little more forceful push here, but still a, just a tap. I'm just hitting the head of the I can see, you can't see but from there, but down, looking down through here, we can see where the fan, and you can't see it very well, but anyway, looking down through that hole, I can see, and you'll have to believe me, that the Woodruff key is still in place, and the fan has pretty much butted against the spacer. Just another Gentle top there. We'll put our lock washer in place. And again, washer the washers, the nuts on this engine have a lead in chamfer on the on one side and they're flat on the other. And it looks from these nuts, I would say. This nut is clean, is dirty on one side and clean on one side, so I would say that nut was on second. And this nut looks like it has a mark here from the lock washer. So I'm going to put that side against the engine and this shiny side out actually. See, that nut could go either way. And I'm going to put it with the flat side the flat side out. Again, I'm not going to be able to tighten this all the way to the torque specified in the manual because I don't have a proper tool to hold the fan and if we use anything but the proper tool we risk damaging the fan more than it already is. So I'm just going to gently Turn the nut down. I'm holding two fan blades with my fingers. And this will just hold the fan on while we continue to work on this. And I will research the tool that's supposed to make tightening this nut a breeze. First, we have to torque this nut to the recommended specification. It's starting to get tight. Okay, that's as tight as I can hold it with my finger. So, I have one nut on with the flat side out, and I'm just going to start this nut. Put my hand, actually, put it on a little bit with a ratchet. Just to hold the fan on while we're doing other things. So that's the fan set in place with the nuts not tight. Well, as I started to say, and then I interrupted myself, we'll need to hold the fan and tighten the first nut to the torque specified in the manual, and then there's a torque, different torque, for the second nut. So, 
have to research the proper tool for holding this and tighten the nut at that time. So from here we're going to start doing some cleaning on the Dynastart. We'll be right back after I change up what we've got on the bench here. Okay, so to continue on this engine on the Dynastart side, on the right side, we have the Dynastart rotor that came off of the engine. We have one here for comparison and we have the stator that was on this engine. Now first we're going to clean up or attempt to clean up the rotor. The rotor, you can see here, the inside of it is it's copper wires with a paint type insulation on it. I mean, I'm not sure if it's a shellac or exactly what and we can see here there these vertical stripes here are steel I'm going to call them pole pieces that the magnetism works with to make the rotor spin when the starter is, gener is uh, energized. Now the center hub of this is also corroded. Now the face of this, the commutator face, the section down here where all these pie shaped pieces are, that's going to have to be cleaned. But that will have to be cleaned with something other than this product we have here. There's also corrosion around the the edge of the rotor here and a little bit on the outside and in the hole where the puller would go to remove it. So what we're going to do is use this product over here and see what happens. I've read up on it as much as I can find and apparently it does not affect copper or the insulation on here so I'm going to try it and see. Now I have a spare rotor here if need be and you can see it's it's not in perfect shape either but it is much better. It's not as rusty. It has been sitting off the engine off of an engine for a while so there's a little bit of corrosion. You can see the copper is turned green in a bit but anyway this is in better condition, better appearing condition, it is a little corroded here, but we'll try this product on it and see what happens. And the reason we have to clean the corrosion off of it, now we have to clean the corrosion off of the, the commutator surfaces, the pie shaped parts, so that the brushes that are on here and in bad need of replacement, so those brushes contact those, that commutator surface and so it has to be clean, a shiny clean so that the electricity can be passed from these brushes through the commutator and the reason we want to remove the rust on here off the iron parts, the steel parts, is this is the stator sorry, this is the stator in my right hand and this is the rotor and the two should fit together so that there's a, a clearance between them and there isn't really a lot of clearance there now so we want to clean both components so as much of the rust is removed as possible. So there's clearance between the two parts when the engine's running, otherwise they're going to rub. They're going to, they're going to rub and as they rub stuff's going to wear off of them and it'll be rust or metal filings and it'll make a mess. So we want it as clean as possible so it can work as well as possible when we put it back together. So we're going to try the metal rescue. So here is the rotor, open face down, in a bucket, in which I have poured the entire container of metal rescue. So we'll leave this for a couple of hours and see what happens. So I have been testing some parts of the Seba Dynastart in a product called Metal Rescue and I'm liking what I'm seeing. This is one of the pole pieces from the stator. This is the 
screw from the stator that holds the whole piece in place. And what I did was I simply removed the screw and wiggled the pole piece out. You can see the screw here in place and this the pole piece in this section of winding where this is the one that's obviously had the pole piece removed. And I took the two items and put them in a bucket of the metal rescue product, which is approximately a gallon of product. And I just let it sit in there, say for an hour, then I took it out, gave it a bit of a rub with a wire brush, put it back in again, and repeated that over the course of a day while I was doing other things. And the rust is pretty much gone from the the pole piece and the screw looks very good. So what I'm going to do, I think, is remove all of the pole pieces from this stator so that I can soak the center piece here and try to clean the rust from it because it is a bit of a mess. And to take the windings off of this stator, I'm also going to have to remove the brushes and the brush holders. And I'm going to have to... Now, I've checked the parts explosion for the stator, and the pole pieces and screws are all the same. There should be 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 of them. And they don't give any separate part, any different part numbers for any of them, so the pole pieces should all be the same. Now, the the uh, windings. I'm not exactly sure how they will come off, but I'm going to take this apart very carefully. Take each brush and brush holder out slowly and separately and make sure all the parts for each brush if at all possible are kept separate and bagged so that this can go back together. Now I will probably have to mark when I when I get this down a little further I'm sure that it matters where the these windings are in relation to the holes here so that everything's timed correctly. But anyway, as I get more of this exposed, I'll see how it comes apart and have to be careful how it goes back together because the relationship between these three hole mounting holes and where this harness ends up, I'm sure is very important. So Anyway, that's going to be interesting taking that apart. I think I'll start just by taking the pole pieces out and cleaning them up. And then, because that's going to take some time, I might as well get that out of the way. And then, only take, this up, take the stator apart as I can clean it so that it's apart for the least amount of time. Now, the rotor was also given a soak in the... Metal Rescue, and it is it is not like new, but it certainly cleaned it up. It's I put it in the Metal Rescue this way so that as the the rust was removed from it, it could fall out of the uh, the rotor. Now there is still some rust in these blind holes, but I think a little scratch with a small screwdriver will clean that up. But that's not critical. So I did the same with this. I left it in the solution for a while, took it out any place where there was corrosion. I gave it a rub with a just a small toothbrush sized wire brush in this area. Now the commutator surface still needs to be cleaned. I'll do that with some fine sandpaper. We want this all this surface down here to be nice bright copper colored so that the uh, brushes can make contact. Anyway, the cleaning is coming along and 
I may, uh, I think I'll give this a coat of paint too if I can find some red oxide paint. Clean that up a little bit. Still some gunk on it here. That actually, just coming off with my fingernail. So I'll give this a little, a little more cleaning. I'll look for some paint to clean that up with, and we'll continue taking the stator apart. Demonstration of how I'm taking the screws out of the stator here. There's a slot head screw, large slot head screw. So what I have here is an impact driver, a hand impact driver, with two different sizes of slot bits, straight bits, and Phillips bits. I'll take the largest Phillips, uh, sorry, straight bit. That simply goes in the driver. And the way the driver works is, you want as you you hit it with a hammer, and it turns the bit a little bit. So I'm going to put this straight down on my work surface here. Turn the driver so that it's wanting to unscrew, and give it a slap with the hammer here. Now the slot in the in the screw is fairly clean, so and we want the bit as square in the screw as we can get it, so that it has less tendency to slip. I don't know if you can see that it the screw is turning. Yeah, we can definitely see now the screw is turning. Okay, so. There's the screw removed, and there is the there is uh, sorry a before screw. So the the shaft of it here isn't actually too bad. The end and the head of it. There's comparison before and after. So the screw isn't actually in too bad a condition when removed because the it was. This was hidden and fairly well sealed in the pole piece so the moisture couldn't get at it. And now I'll get a small screwdriver, or a medium screwdriver. And carefully Extract. Oh, I'm trying to remove the one with the screw in it. That won't work. I'll go to the next one here. Now the whole winding is trying to, rem to come out, and I don't want that. Carefully pry the pole piece out of the winding if I can. This is not rust where there it should be clean. Everything's stuck together. Okay, I think I've got movement here. Yeah, the pole piece. There we go. The pole piece is starting to come out. Hold the winding and place here as I pry gently on the pole piece. Okay, so the pole piece is, is coming out. Gentle wiggle here. Okay, so there, there's the pole piece out. So there, again, for comparison is rusty pole piece, one that's been in the the metal rescue. So I'll take several of the pole pieces out and put them all in the metal rescue together. Put that one that's clean aside. And so I'll take some more of these out 
gently as I did this one and put all of that stuff in the metal rescue as I'm doing other things and I can take them out and give them a rub with the wire brush from time to time to help the metal rescue do its job. So here we have in the sunlight is the stator assembly with the brushes in sad shape. So I'm going to, what I'm doing here is just I'm trying to clean the heads of the screw out with a screwdriver before I attempt to remove them. So what I'm going to do is take the brushes and brush holders out and keep track of everything from each brush and brush holder in a separate little plastic bag here. The brushes obviously are not going to be reused, but the hardware may be. Anyway, it's a good idea to keep everything, keep everything organized until this is back together and working. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is remove the brush. So the brush has a, a wire on it here, a tag on it. And we'll see. It. Actually, I'm going to get a sharp knife. Of course, be careful when working with sharp knives. Just going to see if I can clean this screw out a little better. Make sure this screwdriver has the best chance of removing it. There we go, the screw is turning. So we'll remove the screw. So if we can remove the screw, and there's washers and insulators and all kinds of stuff here. So yeah, there's a there's a a screw, lock washer, flat washer, insulator, insulating washer, and an insulating sleeve. So we want to keep that all together and remove the brush from the brush holder. Gentle pry with the screwdriver. So there's the, you can see it here in this light, sorry, I'm even working on camera here, not really. Just move the camera a wee bit. Okay, so there is a very sad looking brush. The brush is worn out, it's broken. The brush is worn out, broken. The spring is rusty and collapsed, so that definitely is definitely is due for replacement. So we'll put that in one bag, set it aside. Actually, the brush holder for that is going to be put in there too, so I shouldn't put it aside quite yet. Now there is a looks like there's a contact here goes between the two brush holders. So I'm going to, it looks like I'm going to have to take this brush out as well before I can take either brush holder out. Actually, no, I'm going to try, I'm going to try this one brush holder by itself so I don't get too many separate parts out. So again, clean the screw head out with the knife. The screwdriver that fits screw some firm pressure and well the screws coming out oh, how well this is showing up in camera I'm kind of working in the morning sunshine outside here so there's the screw with a lock washer on it a flat washer This should be an insulating washer. And 
and there's an insulating sleeve there which I just dropped that's all I'll put the insulating sleeve is just going onto the screw like a nut almost so I'll put that all together in the same bag as that one first brush now let's see if the brush holder the brush holder is wiggling here see if it will slide out towards the center of the stator and it is so there's the brush holder which is going to need some serious cleaning and there should be an there's an insulating plate and there should be one of those on this side as well yes there is So in this stator, the brush is insulated from the mounting so that none of these are grounded. They're all connected. So here is the center core out of the stator. It is pretty rusty. So I'm going to take the seal out of it here. This is the seal. Pop that seal out give this a scrape with a, a gentle scrape with a screwdriver just take any large chunks of loose stuff off and give it a quick pra, pra, pass with sorry a wire brush just to clean any loose stuff off of it and then it will go in the metal rescue as well it will be interesting to see how this cleans up Okay, well, take the loose stuff off and then soak it in the metal rescue and see what happens.